I never set out to be an activist. I just wanted a good life. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut. Farms of corn and cattle sprawled in between lush green state forest. I was barefoot all summer and ate sugar snap peas straight from the garden and blueberries until I thought I might burst. I drank unhomogenized, unpasteurized cow and goat milk with the cream still on top. Sometimes we had hot dogs, hostess Twinkies, or cotton candy at the county fair. I could eat anything, anywhere I went, as long as I didn't eat too much junk food. I didn't know anyone with autism, food allergies to soy or corn, and I didn't know anyone with Crohn's disease or Hashimoto's. Things have changed. Today in America, one out of two children have a chronic illness such as allergies, asthma, autism, autoimmune disease, obesity, or diabetes. Food allergies have increased 400% in the past 20 years the same time period that GMOs or genetically modified organisms and their related toxins have been in our food supply. My children have or have had allergies to wheat, gluten, dairy, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, and carangenin, which is in hot dogs, lunch meats, ice cream, and pretty much everything that kids like. All of these health issues became extremely important to me when my firstborn son almost died at five years old from pecans in the stuffing. A few years later, my second son had autism symptoms and asthma. Then we learned my youngest son could die from exposure to peanuts. We were confused, frustrated, and angry. Why? And it's not just us. Every family I talk to today has a loved one afflicted with a chronic illness or cancer. This is not okay. There's a saying that goes, a worried mom does better research than the FBI. Like many moms across America today, I took that on. I researched and learned that our food supply had changed and our children were being exposed to an enormous amount of toxins. We are in a health crisis and our health care costs will bankrupt the U.S. budget within a decade if we don't do something about it. However, I saw my children get better when we avoided GMOs and related toxins. Here's what I learned. So I found out that Americans eat the most GMOs in the world and have the worst health. GMOs are in 85% of America's processed foods. So virtually everything that you see on the grocery store aisles have GMO ingredients in them. GMOs, to sum it up, are genetically engineered to either be a pesticide or to resist herbicides. And the one that is a pesticide means that it's registered with the EPA as a pesticide. That BT toxin is put into the DNA of corn, and when a bug eats it, its stomach explodes. And that's what we eat in our tortillas, in our cereal, in our corn syrup, in our corn oils. Also, the resisting herbicide, that's the one that resists Roundup so that everything else around it dies, but our food does not. GMOs are essentially a chemical delivery system to humans. They are engineered so that chemical companies can sell more chemicals to the farmers. 80% of GMOs are engineered to withstand Roundup. Roundup is also sprayed now as a drying agent on non-organic foods at harvest just to speed up the process so that they can harvest everything at once. Historically, moms have determined the longevity of a culture through careful food preparation. We trusted our instincts. For the past 20 years, moms in the U.S. have not been able to trust their instincts because the GMO food has not been labeled. So we have seen that the health of our nation has declined. My son, Ben, that red rash around his mouth after going GMO-free for four months, that line around his mouth was dramatically decreased. You can barely see a faint pink line under his lip that lasted two days instead of two weeks. This is important to note because inflammation caused by allergies can cause stomach ulcers, which can cause stomach cancer. The rash on the outside is not the problem. The rash is actually the body's way of telling you that there's inflammation going on in the gut. It's actually a good thing. It's a warning signal. So I'm really glad for that because we were able to cut back on GMOs or almost completely eliminate GMOs, putting green drinks in his diet, probiotics, and I believe we are preventing stomach cancer by going GMO-free. Roundup and glyphosate-based herbicides are also sprayed on backyards, streets, parks, and playgrounds. Our soil, tap water, children's urine, breast milk, food, and even vaccines are now testing positive for glyphosate. Studies show glyphosate herbicides to be neurotoxic, cause birth defects, mineral deficiency, miscarriages, liver disease, and even cancer. We must protect our children and families from toxic chemicals. 
It's not enough for me to protect just my children, however, as their future spouses are out there somewhere, and I want them to be able to experience the profound love that it is to have their own child someday, if they wish to. I realize that our food and health crisis is a community issue, so in 2013, with the support of many people, I created Moms Across America and invited people all across the country to join in to Fourth of July parades to raise awareness about GMOs. Since then, over 600 leaders have created nearly 900 events in all 50 states, marching, movie nights, and gatherings, raising awareness with millions of people. Moms and supporters are determined to take back health in America, and we will. In 2016, we set out across the country on the National Toxin-Free Town Tour to raise awareness about GMOs and toxins, and also to learn from fellow Americans how they are coming together, what they are doing to protect their communities. On the second day of our National Toxin-Free Tour, also the first day of our National Health Billboard campaign, ironically and outrageously, my family was sprayed by helicopter with weed killer. Unbelievable, look at that white stream of spray. We were volunteering on an organic farm, which bordered a state field that was being sprayed for invasive weeds. I ran to the makeshift greenhouse, which had an open roof, and before I could tell my kids who were working inside that we had to leave, the helicopter flew directly over our heads and sprayed my entire family and dog. My son had a bloody nose within minutes and for eight days afterwards. We used multiple supplements to detox, but it may take years for symptoms to show up in our children. We can see the effects on pesticide applicators and farm workers, however, who are exposed to these toxic chemicals daily. Pesticides have been shown to be neurotoxins, and farmers have the highest rate of depression and suicide out of all of the careers in America. My anger and inability to protect my family has only increased my commitment to raise awareness around the country so we can protect all of our children and each other. We met Tammy Canal, mother of three, who took matters into her own hands and instigated the March Against Monsanto. Over 400 cities around the world and millions of people have been marching for years to stop corporate corruption and the decline of our health. She's protecting her children and family at home as well. As far as Jenna and celiacs, before, right, right before I found out about GMOs in uh, 2012, she was having all these uh, stomach issues, so we actually had her tested for celiac, and her IgG test came back at a 99. Which is very high. It, it's almost off the charts. Wow. So we started learning about GMOs, and you know, after starting March Against Monsanto, we made a really concerted effort to eliminate you know, GMOs and really not not just non-GMO verified, we really tried to eat organic. We had her retested in 2014, and her levels have dropped to 11. She doesn't complain about- 11? 11. She doesn't complain about stomach pain anymore. She doesn't have like cramping. I mean, this, this was a very sick little girl. You know, she was losing a lot of weight, and she, you know, you've seen my daughter, she's a tall, skinny little bean pole. Mm -hmm. So any weight loss was, you know, it's, that's bad and concerning as a mom. What do you think about the GMOs and the food? It's awful. And what do you think? It's wrong. And what it's do you horrible. They're reading labels more than I am at this point, and they're pointing out when I sometimes make a mistake. And uh, I haven't seen that there's a soy derivative in something. So, um, and this is all on their doing that at this point. I, I just gave them a little bit of an introduction to it, and they took off with it and proud of them. And I think they'll continue the activism too once um, we're older and they have their own families and their own friends, and, and they're in their own communities. Everything process pretty much has um, high fructose corn syrup, soy, and maybe even some cottonseed oil. Anything with vegetable oil will have some kind of soy and cottonseed and canola. I'm on board. People have to relearn how to cook. A lot of people don't cook and that's part of uh, how we got to where we are. Mm -hmm. And we still keep finding bad food. The other day we found some uh, red food coloring from many, many years ago. I read the ingredients, the only edible thing in it was water. Yeah, Every now and then ago, there's yeah. something still hidden somewhere in our kitchen. In our pantry, <laughs> yes, I know about that too. Uh, yep. It's in the condiments too, right? In a lot of like different ketchups and sauces, we have to be careful that there could be soy or corn yep. oil or uh, cottonseed oil, yeah. just different oils, yeah. Yep. So you're on board, Dad, and so does, now does that mean that you're doing more cooking too? Oh, I've always done uh, cooking. Uh, Great. Yeah. Great. Are you girls learning how to cook? Grow vegetables. I should probably spend more time doing that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
All across the country, people agreed that cooking organic food at home was not only cheaper than eating the standard American diet, but it was the solution to resolving health issues. In disadvantaged areas, however, people have a hard time cooking at home. So we were delighted to meet someone who was doing something about that. Here at the commissary, I run Recycle Pots and Pans, and that's a 501c3 nonprofit where we collect and redistribute commonly used kitchen equipment. So if I were to say, Zen, let's make breakfast, what do we need? We're going to have scrambled eggs. Well, we need a frying pan, we need a spatula, we need a plate, we need a fork, maybe some measuring cups. What we do is we take items from many people's homes and we redistribute them to those in need through other Central Ohio and Northeast Ohio nonprofits, um, victims of domestic violence, human trafficking, migrant farmers, um, and immigrants. We work with all populations to help them get the tools that they need so that they can produce meals in their homes. The commissary is, is a wonderful space. It is a space that's designed for folks who want to produce food products. Um, hot sauces, caterers, charcuterie, um, and it's a place where we can actually make products on a small scale and then take those products to the market. I'm Robin and this is my company, Robin's Frozen Fantasy. I make a hemp seed based ice cream using all organic ingredients and it's allergy friendly. And the reason I started this was because I found out that I had problems with dairy and then I learned more and more about food and found out that children have so many issues right now with allergies that I wanted to make it as allergy friendly as I possibly could, as healthy as I possibly could, and as tasty as I possibly could. And then later on, I found out about genetically engineered foods and that's become my passion. I speak about it and I bring in all kinds of packaged foods and I discuss what, what is genetically engineered and what isn't and I tell people how to avoid them. As we drove cross country, we were inspired by the creativity of the people we met. We were also deeply disturbed by the evidence of the poisoning of America. We saw Roundup sprayed along roadsides for thousands of miles, algae filled fishing ponds, and even campgrounds that had been sprayed. We are at a campground by the Mississippi River, and some people might see the beautiful, wide, flowing Mississippi River but what I see makes me very sad because I know that this brown strip along the side of the campsites and along those rocks over there, all along the river, they've sprayed toxic chemicals that then drain right into the river, kill the wildlife. These chemicals are no neurotoxins, and as my family experienced after being sprayed, can cause anger, depression, and aggression. And what did you just do about glyphosate? What did you? Well, plus, do we, we passed a policy not to use it on our facility. Glyphosate or, or any type of a weed killer kills the weed, but yet it comes back the next year. So it, it doesn't kill the weed, but what does uh, uh, an herbicide does? Some of the toxic herbicides. What are they killing? You know, they may have more of the herbicides in their home. The babies are growing, and that's why our babies are being born uh, with adult diseases. And people are always telling me, how can we keep pharmaceuticals out of our waterways? And the only answer to that is stay healthy. Thousands of moms have reported that when their children avoid GMOs and toxins, their health issues improve. We saw a whole team of specialists and none of them could figure out what was going on. When my daughter was about four months old, they asked me to stop breastfeeding. We had been on a restricted diet since she was born with no peas or beans or legumes, no dairy, no eggs, no wheat, and no soy. And it just didn't seem to be helping. I had been losing way too much weight. So we decided to go with the formula, but unfortunately it didn't help and things kept getting worse and the episodes more frequent and lasting longer. At this time, her vocal cords would sometimes paralyze shut for 16 hours straight with her struggling to breathe. I scoured the internet over this time for months and months trying to find anyone else with these symptoms. I knew she couldn't be the only one in the world that had whatever condition this was. When she was about 10 months old, she started refusing her formula and didn't want to eat food. I was desperate and I just happened to run across moms on the internet who had these sick kids with tons of different symptoms and they decided to stop eating GMOs and their kids got better. 
I had no idea what GMOs were, so I started researching, and what I found was devastating. I thought that what I was eating and what I was feeding my children was the same food that I had eaten when I was their age. I found out that it didn't even exist at that time. I brought everything that I had found to my daughter's pediatrician and told her I wanted to go GMO free with her. She said that everything else hadn't been working, so we might as well try it. I left the doctor's office that day. I bought organic whole milk and organic rice and oatmeal cereals, fruits and veggies, and we started her on them right away. She hadn't had any dairy products since she was born, but she had no reaction to the milk. Within two weeks, her symptoms were completely gone, and she didn't have any more problems with her vocal cords paralyzing shut. My son was doing completely better, and I was completely better with my digestive problems. We are 100% organic now and try to be as GMO-free as possible. I think it's really important to know that we had an amazing team of specialists at Children's Hospital that could not figure out what was wrong, and it was because of moms on the internet that were telling their stories. They saved my daughter's life, and it's important that we all talk to our friends and families about this and spread the word so that everybody starts to know. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some chicks, E-I-E-I-O, with a chick chick here and a chick chick there. Farming has changed as well. Animals are also impacted by GMOs. Factory farmed livestock are fed GMOs and toxic chemicals, and these chemicals end up in our pet food too. Our pets are also affected when they walk on chemicals outside. They track the pesticides into our homes where our children walk barefoot. Our pets are being poisoned as well. I know that there have been ingredients such as inedible tallow in some major dog foods, um, including Purina. Here we have a lot of the trains that go by and it says right on the side of it, inedible tallow. So it really is important, not just what we're putting into our bodies, but our furry family members need that same care as well. Before we left on the tour, our family was very upset about the state of our country and we were considering moving away. As we drove across our nation, however, we saw such beautiful places and met such generous people that we realized that this country is worth fighting for. For some people, their way of protecting their families is to grow non-GMO and organic food. I spoke to farmer Pat Trask in the heartland of America about why he took on Monsanto all the way to the Supreme Court to prevent GMO alfalfa from contaminating the animal feed supply. There seemed to be a lot of collusion to monopolize what should be farmers growing and selling their produce and their seed. And when those elders told me about the ultimate monopoly being granted by the patent rights for perennial alfalfa to be genetically modified and then that would mean that all alfalfa was only sold by one vendor and farmers couldn't sell their seed anymore and that kind of sounds like fighting words because it's the ultimate blasphemy when God looked upon creation and said it was good it was it is and so nobody should have biotech patent rights on life forms. So Mr. Phil Geertsen and I were the farmer, rancher, alfalfa growers that gave standing to the case and it had a lot of participants besides a million and some farmers that were actively involved in trying to stop this ultimate monopoly of perennial alfalfa being owned and disseminated by only one company. We went through three federal courts and finally into the Supreme Court, and it was an eight to zero decision by the court members in our favor. And then Secretary Vilsack reiterated, at this point, we believe, and he said it three times, we have no choice, we have no choice, we have no choice but to again deregulate this perennial GMO plant to be legalized for planting. Everyone knows that when you buy a bag of Roundup Ready alfalfa seed, there's some significant problems there. There's a certain amount of weed seed can be in there and still be legal. So virtually all the seeds in a bag of GMO seed, virtually all the weed seeds, are already resistant to glyphosate. And glyphosate is a huge toxin in our environment. Glyphosate 
when it is used with GMO alfalfa exactly according to the label and then you harvest the alfalfa feed it to a cow milk the cow the milk that you give to the pregnant woman has five times the parts per million of glyphosate that it would take to cause the pregnant woman to abort her baby. Although farmers can grow GMO alfalfa, most choose not to in order to protect the agriculture industry. We met Howard on his non-GMO family farm in Iowa. We have right at 300 acres. We're, we're a small, diversified family farm. We have beef cattle, we have a small dairy presence, we have the laying hens, we have broilers for meat birds, we raise and sell, mm -hmm. uh, we raise our own uh, replacement stock hens, we have pullets, we have lambs, and we'll get our turkeys chicks next month. Everything that we raise is fed without antibiotics, without growth hormones, and completely a non-GMO ration. We also make and sell complete non-GMO feed mixes for a growing number of people that want to raise their own food for their family. This year for crops we have flax, we have rye, we have oats, we have corn, soy, grass hay, pasture. We will put in some alfalfa following the oats crop and for a cash crop we have tillage radish. We never have had to depend on the glyphosate herbicides or the glyphosate crops because of our focus on managing the soil. We do everything we can to get it in balance, both nutritionally and biologically. You want a balance of bacteria and fungi. If you till the soil a lot, you're going to reduce your fungal population and be lopsided to your bacterial population and that can cause a flush of weeds just from that imbalance. Just like you want a maximum population of good organisms in your digestive tract, we want a maximum population as diverse of species of good organisms in our soil as what you want in your stomach. And when it's imbalanced, you don't have the weed pressure. Does it cost more per pound? Yes, it does. But what do you get out of it? We sell eggs to people that they have family members that they're told by medical professionals, avoid eggs at all costs. And they, can and eat, they eat our eggs with <laughs> no problems or side effects whatsoever. How do you put a cost on not having the side effect and the ill health? I feel sorry for the farmers that are in that system that feel like they're stuck lost an entire generation of quote-unquote agronomists that they know no other way to manage weeds and to us managing weeds isn't picking the right herbicide it's balancing the soil first mm -hmm. and if you don't understand that then you're almost forced into that that production system that makes you dependent on the glyphosate and glufosinate type herbicides, which you know, now we have 27 or 29 weeds that are proven resistant to it. And where do they go from here? Gabe Brown is a pioneer in this. Him and countless other people across the country are figuring it out on their own farms and sharing that information so that other farmers have a template to follow to be successful transitioning away from the GMOs. We also visited urban farms, which were growing up to a million pounds of organic food on an acre or two for their communities. Detroit, Michigan is a shining example of what communities can do. It's called the Greening of Detroit. Over 20,000 volunteers every weekend support over 1,200 urban farms in Detroit, bringing people together and strengthening communities. Detroit is home to the first grocery store to label GMOs. I had the opportunity here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to go to this facility called Growing Power, run by Will Allen, a world-famous farmer who has numerous awards 
for fostering growing food in your own backyard. So this is greenhouse number one. And this is actually the first greenhouse that we started in. Because when Mr. Allen first got started. So here we have sugar snap peas sprouts. Oh. And we have some on top right here. A little bit bigger. I can try one. It's like a little sweet taste to them. You just pick it and eat it? Yep, pick it and eat it. Just pick the whole thing and then you eat it. Yeah. Yep. Tastes good. So here is our aquaponic systems. Like we trying to recreate what's it like in nature. So we have a river on the bottom. Then on top, we have pea gravel, watercress, duckweed. Just like it is in the lake. We have a constant flow of water. But then on top, we have herbs and pots. So even though it's in the pot, the roots go through the bottom of the pot and filter off the water. Oh, you have water up there too? Yes. So we have two layers. If we could get away with it, we have another layer. We could, yeah, we could. But the more space we have, the more it can grow. And we do not order any GMO products. So it's clear that we can grow food organically and protect our communities from GMOs and toxins. We just need to support these farmers and buy organic. Many people do not have access to non-GMO food or do not know about GMOs still because they have not been labeled. We feel every American and every human should have the right to know what is in their food. In July of 2016, Vermont's GMO labeling law went into effect, and we made sure to join into the Montpelier 4th of July parade to thank the people of Vermont for their hard work. However, the state law was later overruled by the federal labeling law called the Dark Act. This law does not require for the words GMO or GE to be anywhere on the package. Many food companies, however, have decided to label GMOs anyway, thanks to Vermont. To find out more about growing organic food, we also joined a program called WOOF, Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. In this program, you can learn how to farm organically by volunteering in exchange for meals and a place to stay. Well, we have, we have 60 families that are part of our CSA. $35 for all of this. Wow, amazing. We do grow well organically here on the farm. We're not a certified organic farm. We do what's called the Farmer's Pledge, sort of a grassroots response to the USDA taking over organic certification. And it's, a, it's an affidavit that we sign with our state Organic Farmers Association. And it is basically a pledge. You know, it's on my, on my honor that I'm only growing using organic practices. We're starting to sell a lot of product to our local school systems. And so we have a strong relationship with our local food service directors and two of the larger local school systems. They're very excited about being able to source local and clean food for the kids in their schools. So that's that's one that's, that's big to my heart. And we're working to expand uh, that reach into other school systems, trying to make food service directors from all over the state sort of understand how easy it is to really work with the farmers. I think my lack of understanding about genetically modified crops and, and how they're produced uh, is the biggest problem. Uh, I think that we are the experiment and that's not the way science is supposed to work. The other thing that I'm very concerned about in the GMO world is, is the proliferation of herbicides as a result of genetically modified crops being, being built to withstand them. And, you know, um, I don't necessarily think that herbicides were meant to be eaten. This is a tomato hornworm. I sprayed this house last week with Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt, uh, which has sort of gotten a bad rap in the GMO side because they've learned how to infuse certain proteins from Bt directly into certain plant genes, uh, which makes it an uncontrolled uh, experience out in the environment. This is what it does to these hornworms. It basically just desiccates them. It's a gut paralytic, so it's a bacterium 
and when the caterpillar eats the vegetation of the plant that has the Bt bacterium on it, it paralyzes the caterpillar's gut and the basically sort of starves to death and starts to desiccate. Wow, that's pretty gross. So so how do we know that's not happening to our guts when we eat it? How, how does this not hurt us? As soon as it dries, it, the toxicity goes away. So the re-entry times after you spray are very short. And basically you have to let the crops dry out. Obviously it's not that harmful. I see butterflies flapping around behind us. Well, this is so. a, the other thing about BT is it's very targeted. There's only certain uh, insects and mostly with BT it's the it's the larval stage or the caterpillar stage okay. of, of the insect that's affected and then the problem is that's when it's genetically modified and put into the corn then it constantly reproduces more toxins it becomes a little toxin factory and that's not controllable well right it's not a controlled application um, it's it's constantly present in, in the crop and in the environment and so you know some of the questions about the effects uh, of that on insect non-targeted insect species is also there. Do you use glyphosate at all? Not, on this farm? not a drop of it on this property but like if I have a patch of poison ivy or something like that that I want to try to get under control mm -hmm. high percentage vinegar and soap is all it takes and uh, it burns it right down that's so, great. With, without any residual toxicity in the soil. They put 330 pounds of pesticides on strawberries and about 350 pounds of um, synthetic fertilizer. Per, per what? Per acre. Oh. Per acre. And so what we do is we simulate bags of pesticides and fertilizer on a pallet. And then right next to it, we put three bales of straw, which is what we put on our strawberries, right? And a little bit of fish and kelp and a bag of compost, right? And that's it. Oh, do you show us some of those weeds? Oh. All right, you just pull those up, you shake the dirt out, right? There you go, so that it doesn't keep growing. All kinds of people helping out. There's corn growing over there. There's potatoes beyond that. Just pulling weeds. It's this easy. You don't need synthetic chemicals. It just takes a few seconds. It does mean manual labor, but when you ask the community to join in, it's actually kind of fun. They're chatting it up over there, telling stories, and they've got a whole operation set up here to spray garlic with. It smells awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Did you eat some fresh garlic? Is that evidence right there? Yep. It's been harvest today. Just today. You, you just told me, didn't you? Yeah. Awesome. Good job, guys, and then they put the clean ones over here and bind them up into bundles of garlic hanging to dry. Hung up these bundles right here. Just get hung up. They get hung up like this. Hung up. No. There, you go. there we go. He's gonna hang those up to dry in a rafter. Somebody will. Why is it important to you to eat organic? Why do you go out of your way instead of just going to the grocery store? Why do you come here to do this? Um, well, for a few reasons. I want to support my local farmers. And um, also, you know, when I became a parent, I realized how important it was, how many toxins were going into our home. And I didn't want that for my family, so. So you sick. want to avoid the toxins? Yeah, yep. How do you feel about the GMOs? Um, it's scary. It's really scary, yeah. Even though the scientists say it's safe? I, I'm sorry to say a lot of things are safe. <laughs> Courageous people all across the country know about the changes to the food supply and are coming together to take action to protect their communities. California to the New York Island. We love our children and we want them healthy. This land we want to be all free. They changed the food and they tried to hide it. Found out and now we fight it. We want it labeled and off our.
our tables. This land we want GMO free. Will you please join us to help our children protect their future? Cause they deserve one. Keep them healthy, not big farm wealthy. This land we want GMO free. John and the name of our farm is Standish Brook Farm in Colchester. Standish Brook Farm in yep. Colchester and when did you establish your farm? Uh, this year we just started in February. Wow so you're young new farmers. Was the farm already established or are you setting out new? Nope everything's brand new so we just did everything from the ground up. Wow so what has you want to be a farmer? Uh, basically we don't like the way that the food supply is and we want to change that, awesome. so we think we can do it one farm at a time. <laughs> we want to be able to um, be able to uh, support local local farmers, local produce, local growers, organic, not GMO, um, not chemical, um, and just have a better um, a better food for us, our children, and our community. Well, I had this one student. He was in sixth grade at the time, and he weighed because I would keep track of their weights, you know, especially if they were over 200 pounds, because that's life threatening. Mm -hmm. And he weighed like 250, 260. And I'm, I'm like, you know, you just, just do this one thing. Mm -hmm. Just eat something only the size of your fist, okay? He says, okay, Nurse Roberts, I'll do that. You know, because a lot of them overeat or they don't eat the right foods. And I thought if I just get down the serving size, maybe that would help him. Well, he was a sixth grader at the time. And when I, when I moved to the high school, then he was like a ninth grader and he would come up to me and go nurse roberts i remember what you said about the fist and i've lost 40 pounds rhonda also asked natural grocers to come to arkansas and open up a store and they did she then asked her students to go to the new store where 100 percent of their produce is organic and just buy one piece of fruit so that they could see what organic fruit tastes like and they did because of people like Nurse Roberts, who want a healthy community, natural grocers and organic food stores are spreading across the United States. I was a medical assistant and a nurse, and I realized it was um, very disappointing when I would notice how people, as they were sicker and sicker, um, they were just chasing it with medications and never following up on what people were eating. So I started to do my own research and led me to first Food Inc. and then Genetic Roulette and it changed my life and all I, all I do now is just try to spread the word and I feel incredibly healthy and good. Okay. Really what we need to do is get restaurants on board so we know that we're safe when we go out to eat. And that's my biggest frustration right now. I don't know if I'm safe. And, uh, but it's exciting. To, to spread the word and, and every dime we spend is a vote mm -hmm. and that's what I'm trying to do. We are very forward in our thinking. Uh, we have farmers on staff and we're doing, we're teaching organic gardening and we're teaching all about that. You must be proud to work here. I am very proud to work here. We're so excited Yay. to be with Moms Across America um, and get the word out and we're doing it everywhere we can. We're talking to people in grocery stores. If we see a mom who's carrying an item that she might not know contains GMOs, mm -hmm. we're encouraging moms in our group to go up to that mom and say, hey, I see you have Pepperidge Farm Goldfish there. Did you know that those contain GMOs? Maybe we could steer you over to the Annie's Cheddar Bunnies instead. And a lot of times we've been having really good results. So our big thing is to get nosy, get involved and join the conversation because moms want to know and once they know they care. The reception seems to be pretty good. One thing I found is that I know if someone came up to me and acted like they were Miss Organic Guru, I would be a little bit off put. I explained that I just found out about it and when I did, I was mm. like, oh my gosh. So yeah. um, I try to make sure to get that across. When you support local, 
You are saying no to the chemical corporations and the large food manufacturers who are putting toxins in your food. When you support local, you're saying, I want to empower my community. Because the large chemical companies, who are also the food manufacturers, only have the power they have because we give them our money. So if we stop giving them their money and we buy local food like this, we are part of the solution. This is the solution right here. Supporting local farmers, local businesses. And I think we have an opportunity um, to really make a stand against genetically modified organisms. And one of my passions is corn. Mm -hmm. We have been growing corn in our state for over 500 years, native Arizona blue corn, and I want to protect that from Monsanto's and all the other genetically modified corns from coming in. I organize the farmer's market, I organize my school, but I also just organize the community by myself or with other nonprofits. Two years ago at the Clarkdale, Arizona 4th of July parade, and I dressed up in my 4th of July blue seal ball, red, white, and blue dress, and a hat that had corn stalks. There's a GMO-free Arizona group in the Verde Valley. We packaged my native Arizona blue corn seeds, and instead of handing out candy in the parade, we handed out blue corn seeds. Moms and supporters who are speaking up are making a difference, and they're also making the news. A lab test of 10 California wines concludes that they all contain the active ingredient from weed killer, a chemical classified a probable carcinogen. And a disturbing new report from moms across America shows that it's not just GMOs that are in our food with our knowledge. According to that report, the organization tested 10 wines from California and found that every single one of those wines tested positive. Glyphosate is the key ingredient in Roundup, the most popular weed killer in the world. Glyphosate has been deemed a probable carcinogen by the World Health Organization, so we're concerned about any level being in our food at all. The group behind the testing, a national coalition of mothers who call themselves Moms Across America. So we see that the only way to avoid the, the widespread contamination of glyphosate is to stop using it. And for many farmers, that will just mean that the EPA will have to revoke the license of glyphosate. The state of California has announced it wants to add the glyphosate to its list of known cancer-causing agents. Monsanto sued the state to block that move. If you're going to say no to labeling your own products, like you're afraid of it, and if you're going to spend millions of dollars fighting an initiative that asks for just studies of any new crops, then you're probably hiding something. The point in participating in a march against Monsanto was to let the world know that we know what Monsanto is up to. And that's really, it's just to make money. And it's not to um, help people, and they say it is, but the results of what they're doing is not helping people, it's not helping the planet. And we know about it now, and we want the world to know, and we want it to stop. The National Toxin-Free Tour had us see that, despite the huge challenges we face today, we are able to make a difference and protect our communities. We realized that the people we met are what makes America great. Our food system may be broken, but our people are not. They are creative, courageous, and make a huge contribution to others when they share about GMOs and toxins in our food supply. People around the world are saying no to toxins in their towns, schools, communities, and churches as well. And our global toxin-free zone map is expanding. Moms Across America has expanded to mothers across the world, and we're connecting with dedicated people who are taking action to protect their communities. Hello, I'm Sally, I'm a nutritionist, and I'm also a mum and I'm a member of Mums Say No to GMOs. My name is Jialing Huang. I'm co-founder of No GMO School Lunch Movement and the mother of three kids living in Taiwan. MADGE stands for Mothers Are Demystifying Genetic Engineering as well as Mothers Advocating Deliciously Good Eating because we think food should be fun and we have a right to know what we're eating. We are very concerned about the potential health effects of GM foods. We've seen enough evidence which suggests that there are real health problems connected with eating foods containing GMOs. In my country, only 99% of soy beans are imported from America. Most of them are genetically modified. I lost my dad in 2013. He was 78. 
but before that he had rang me in 2009 and told me daughter I think the chemicals I have been using for my crops, the cotton crops that I'm growing are making me sick. Increasingly people in Australia and worldwide want to know what's in their food and they want clean, healthy, natural food which means no GM. はい、日本のママたちが遺伝子組み換え食品についてどれだけ知っていて、どれどれだけ関心があるかをシールと投票で聞いていきたいと思います。その結果は私たちママプロジェクトのFacebookでご紹介する予定です。どうぞお楽し